Hi there and welcome to Canceling COVID. I'm Tanya Rivens joining you on this Tuesday. So glad to have you tune in as we continue to bring you information. We still have a pandemic happening, folks. And of course, Dr. Black has educated on us to where it uh, is an endemic uh, similar to what happens when we get the flu, where there's timing and planning and you have a great idea of a uh, what to expect. You know, I had pu put this up for you as an opportunity to find out uh, kind of where we're going today. And this is this variant that is happening, as well as the fact that a large city is reinstating a mask mandate. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that we still have some stuff going on around us, people. And I tell you, my friends, it's it's happening and we just need to be aware, informed, involved. And I can't do this alone. So I've got a lot of information that I want to share, but that's what we're about is providing information. So we're seeing some signs of uh, COVID-19 rising again. And I know we're trying to move on and we're trying to get ready for vacation, which is exciting for so many Um but we got to pause and just pay attention to what's happening around us. And it's happening again. Uh, there's a surge looking at what's happening in Germany. Uh, record high numbers between 250,000 and 300,000 new infections a day in the last week. Uh, also, the UK and France, the Netherlands and Austria, uh, they have some rising cases also. And it's interesting as in doing the research that the rise in their countries, it, it's, it's being driven by different factors like of course, the lifting of COVID restrictions. Um, but we're going to talk more with Dr. Black, too, about immunity, you know, from these vaccines and the booster shots and if they're working. And then there is some other transmissible uh, Omicron variants that are out there, subvariants. I don't think we're talking enough about these. And perhaps we are. Um, we just gotten so sick and tired of dealing with it. It's like, OK, come on already. But looks like, you know, from the standpoint of the, the governors and especially from the leadership from the CDC, let me say it like that, in the White House, they're counting on the booster shots and the treatments that we've had, um, you know, for the moment to kind of just kind of even or balance everything out. And that's why the whole mask mandate thing uh, apparently not necessary in their eyes or uh, for now. And also to the point where everybody's pretty much had at least some variant of it. Maybe that's the whole idea. I see you guys hopping on. Let me first of all say thank you for joining us. Thanks for hopping on. Uh, leave your comments in the box in chat and uh, we'll talk more about that. But some interesting things starting to develop. And I guess what's most disappointing is maybe we're getting way too comfortable and not paying a whole lot of attention to it. And we've done this so many times already. Like we know it's happening. We know it's coming, but instead of being proactive, we are always reacting. And maybe I just don't know that the experts are doing their part. And from where I sit, little old me, just not on top of things, but I know somebody who is, and that's none other than Dr. Tricia Black of Groundwater Solutions, who I always love bringing on board with me because she knows what she's talking about. And she certainly helped me to educate you all and get you the information that we need. So good morning, sis. Thank you for tuning in. Good and morning. As always. Hey, it's always great to see you. But what's happening here? I mean, here we are. We're seeing it again. Mm -hmm. But but Tanya, we're like this. And I, you're frozen for me. I don't know if I'm frozen. Hello. I don't see anything. I'm going to keep talking. So um, um, in case the audience, if you're here and you can hear me, um, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated. Yeah, to me. There we go. Okay. I, I don't know. Look, maybe the little uh, internet guys decided to interrupt us for a moment. But thank you to everybody for hanging know. there. Yeah. You know, we've never had this happen on. Uh, never. And I was just going to start talking. Keep talking because I didn't yeah. know if they were listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you back here. So we see what's happening around us again. But I don't and, think they see, Tanya. I think we're like this. I think we don't really? want to acknowledge oh. what's happening. How is that possible? I mean, well, I guess it is when you're just sick and tired of when being. you're sick and tired and you don't yeah. want to deal with it and you don't want to go back. Right, right, I mean, right. Really, we, we are a society that does not like to look at the past okay. to inform us of the future. 
Oh, uh, come yeah. on now. That's a whole that's on a lot of different levels. So, yeah, that's a whole different discussion. Oh, uh, um, critical race theory, but that's a whole nother. That's oh, a whole nother. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, before uh, COVID-19 really hit the United States, it hit in the other countries. Right, right. We saw it happening. Uh -huh. We knew it was coming. Yes. And I don't know if they think that we as a country are immune to anything. I don't know. But we see it over there now mm -hmm. in other countries. We see it traveling around the world. Those are also communities that have gotten the vaccine, that right, have right, folks right. who are double vaccinated and boosted, uh -huh. and they're still seeing a, a spread. So why would we think that that's not going to happen here? Why would we not be proactive and take the necessary steps. And I don't, I mean, unless we're this. Okay. Well, but we've got experts. I mean, we've got plenty of experts like you and others that are, are mm -hmm. you know, in tune and talking and having this conversation. And yet, and still, you know, it's still, we just saw the high profile string of cases even that have broken out mm -hmm. in Washington. In the government. Yeah. 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 So you, you don't think even there that no one's saying, hey, we can't, just can't rush this thing back to life as the new norm? I, I think they should. I was hoping mm -hmm. after that spreader event that mm -hmm. there would be some dialogue about it, but we have not yet seen that happen. I was at a political event here in North Carolina last night, okay. and I was the only one with my mask. You know, and, I, and I'm going to be honest, I, di I didn't put it on. Uh -huh. um, I had it on my arm. I wear it on my arm. And but then when nobody else and typically like I go in the grocery, I have my mask on my arm all the time, wherever I go. And when I go in a public setting, I will typically put it on. Uh -huh. But, you know, I was there representing and and I felt the, the pressure. Yeah. Not, a little pressure. You know, yeah. yeah right. And why should I feel pressure if I choose to wear a mask? Yeah. To protect myself, you know, and so I can understand for people who are not aware or who don't want to be the outsider, typically I will still put it on. And I'm not ashamed to say I didn't, but I didn't put it on last night. And okay. that's okay. Yeah, it happens. Now, typically in church, most most churches are still requiring it, which is great. Mm -hmm. But funny you said that I was at the nail salon yesterday and a young girl, she they're in spring break and she came in and she, everybody had a mask on. And I do support wearing it in the mm -hmm. nail salon as well with all those chemicals. Yeah. But she looked around and she goes, uh, what's wrong? Am I supposed to have a mask on? Because she was the only one. And I just got tickled. It was really funny because she wasn't required to have one. It's not required, but it is suggested. And in there, I think it's a great idea. But we've all been there where you kind of feel a little bit of pressure. If nobody else has one on, then should I put mine on or should yeah. I not? But speaking of mask, I see Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. They are getting ready to bring the mask mandate back for indoors at restaurants, shops, offices, mm -hmm. public spaces. And it goes into effect April 18th. So they're not playing. Right. Mm -hmm. My brotherly love, they're saying, mm -hmm. hey, we, we are going to do, to do this. Mm -hmm. and Whether it's popular or not, we're right. still going to do it. And I think that needs to be the 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 folks who are aware and awoke, uh -huh. that needs to be our mentality, that whether it's popular or not, we will do what's safe and what's best for our community. So in our community, let's bring it back home to Charlotte. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Like you were at an event last night, no mm -hmm. mask. Uh, you know, it, it feels great not to have to wear them. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I breathe better. It's, I'm more comfortable. I, you know, it, I, it is not a comfortable thing. I acknowledge that. Uh -huh. you know, and I, I was saying last night, I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to be shocked when after this event, some, we find out someone had COVID. And so I was just acknowledging, I guess me, when I didn't wear it, I'm taking my own risk that I may yeah. be one of the ones that walk away with it from this with the virus. And so I made the decision last night. I'm just not going to do that. Popular or not popular. I don't want to be sick with COVID. We are seeing folks here in Charlotte, Mecklenburg, in North Carolina uh -huh. um, with COVID again. The again. numbers are going up. We went through a period where we, we would have zero positives every day. I think I told you that. It's yeah. been weeks since we had seen a positive. Well, now the positives are back. You wow. know, they're not in like astronomical numbers, but mm -hmm. we are definitely daily seeing positive folks again. So that means that the virus is out there. Tanya, the mask, although most people say, well, it really doesn't work to, you know, keep everybody from getting COVID. No, but it does slow the spread. Yeah. You know, it's preventative efforts with any illness and disease. We want to slow the spread. We want to slow the progression. And it has been, we know for a fact that the masks do that. So right. why not, if we know the, the risk is there and uh -huh. it's out there, 
Slow the spread. Bring, oh, bring, Lord. No, wear masks. And we got Easter coming up this weekend, Resurrection Weekend. Everybody out on spring break. Big gatherings on Saturday, Sunday. And don't forget about Easter Monday. Oh, my goodness. We're getting ready to set ourselves up for uh, quite a weekend. Yeah, and we're going to have a lot of folks again out sick. We're going to have folks in the hospital. And then we're going to look back and say we should have done something more. So I, I say to the community members, don't wait for the mandate. I do believe mandates are going to come back. We're going to see cities and states re-implementing them. And are you really? I do. Oh, wow. it may be with some type of revised things, but they're they're going to have to. I mean, in the other countries, they're bringing back some are bringing back mass mass mandates. Um, I, I think it's the wise thing to do. Well, here's the thing, though, we are coming up on warmer weather. And so when you're outside, outdoors, uh, I get it. Apparently, when you say with some more restrictions, which we kind of started heading in that direction, mm -hmm. um, not so much outdoors, but when you're inside with uh, large gatherings, mm -hmm. you see in the future the mass mm -hmm. mandates coming back. I do. So what kind of COVID, what are they catching now? What are, what are we catching? Because we've been, we got the vaccine, the booster, and then some people boosted again. Mm -hmm. So is, this is the sub-variant of Omicron, Omicron? It is. Well, we don't know, you know, because the original variants are still Mar out there as well. Oh, I say all Marion, because everybody was just... <laughs> We are funny people. I we? know it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So the other variants are all out there. So when we think about Omicron, we the Delta is still out there. The original um, COVID-19 variants are out there, you know, and we don't know. So the um, a lot of our patients, especially doing Omicron, would call us and say, hey, can you tell me if I have the Omicron variant? Well, no, at the community level, the laboratories, the general laboratories do not test for the variants. The okay. state laboratory takes samples, they take a random sample and they test at the state level um, to see what variants exist in the state. So, um, you know, so I at, a, at the community level can't say what are the variants that I'm seeing in my lab. Okay. None of us can. Uh, but this North Carolina can tell us what variants are being found here from the random sample of positives that they pull. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I guess I'm kind of surprised. I don't know why I thought that once one variant or what one strain was out there, like the Delta, once it runs its course, it's gone. And then we see another sub-variant. They never leave. They just stay, uh, just stick stay. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once you've had it or boosted, or let me say the science supposedly shows that these vaccinations that we've gotten um, protects us or helps us deal with it to where it's not it dead. It reduces the risk, exactly. Okay. It reduces okay. the risk of um, of dying from the disease. And there is a small amount of protection from contracting the disease. Okay. So okay. It, does re it does reduce that as well. You know, and then we've got to do our part, you know, so that is only going to the, the um, earned immunity. You earn some some antibodies and immunity from having carried the virus before you earn some immunity um, from getting the vaccines. And then we've got to do our part, because if it's out there, just like the Omicron, I told you, if you were in the room with it, you were uh -huh. probably going to have it. So yeah. um, unless you took extra protection, you know, hazmat suits, all of that. Right. But we know that there are things that protect us. From, from contracting it. Um, masking is one of them. Social distancing. Remember those things? We don't even talk about that anymore. No. Or, 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 or spatial distancing. We've got to return to doing those things because now we know that a, a, another version, the existing versions are, versions are out, which hopefully we have built up immunity to. You know, but there are new versions out as well. But even if you've got immunity, there are still chances that you get it. So you just take do your part to reduce your risk. Well, maybe we're just all kind of in a fog because you just said that about the physical distancing. So I was out Building a at, business comes with pressure. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't know where from. With inspirity, nothing um, seems impossible. I was there yesterday you know, John, and you're... forgive me, that is me. Uh, mm -hmm. Something I had up on my computer. Oh, all, all kinds of things happening yeah. today. <laughs> anyway, I was out yesterday. Oh, not yesterday. It was Sunday. I was at a, a food establishment and there was a gentleman. I was trying to do the physical distance of six feet. 
And every time I move, he moved closer. And so I finally just kind of stepped out of line and stood out of the way. And I kind of looked at him and I said, yeah, I was just kind of trying to keep some distance between us because, you know, we're still in the pandemic. He goes, you're so right. You're so right. I've had it two times. It was so bad. One time I couldn't even walk. And I'm going, but, sir, you're not even trying still to, to you know, be cautious. And so I just think that we still are just so misinformed and just, I don't get it. I, I just, We've let our guard down and, yeah. it, and it feels good to be out there in a, yeah. in a room full of people again and concerts and things like that. Um, you know, so it's hard to, and I don't think it's going back. I think it's incorporating a new way of us being. So oh, yes, right. let's do the concerts. Let's do those things. But keep in mind for every event, if you're planning event, you're hosting event, you have a responsibility. And COVID-19 protection is one of those responsibilities. We're excited. We're working with a church who's doing a, a one week retreat. Oh, and right. they, they have asked us to come in from day one. One, they're asking folks to be tested before they come. Uh -huh. Two, they're asking us there on day one to provide rapids and the PCR test and to for that to happen multiple times before the end of the event. And for us to remain that as people are departing and if they want to be tested to ensure that they're going home virus free, that we make that available and we're going to do that for them. So I, I, I am so excited about the level of responsibility that these organizers are having. And, and so if you're on a restaurant or whatever you're doing, just keep in mind that when we invite people into our space, mm -hmm. we invite them to participate in our programs, that that gives us a higher level of responsibility that we're going to have to make sure that we take seriously because the general public is not anymore because they have received the message that it's over and that they're good. And we know that's not true. Absolutely. So perhaps that would be a great trend. And we talked about this before. Maybe it will pick up this time where people, as they are hosting events or mm -hmm. are like with the church or retreat, have um, someone such as yourself um, mm -hmm. have these type of companies on site to do testing. I know when we went to an event earlier this year, or was it late last year? I believe I mentioned to you and they hired uh, someone to be on site. It was a concert, but I haven't seen any of that or heard any of that happening this year because we've gotten so comfortable. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, we could talk on and on and on for anybody that's on. We welcome your comments uh, in the chat, but also share this. So people do at least know that somebody is talking about it. We mm -hmm. do see the numbers and you know, I do see the, the news rounds where the professionals are, are mentioning of it, but we're not hearing. I think we could probably hear more about this strain that's already popping off in Europe. And, it, it, you know, it certainly had it this way. We're mm -hmm. not going to be totally immune from it. But what else are you seeing out in the community? You just confirmed now you're starting to see some more positive cases. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing an uptick in testing again? Because it pretty much died down. Right. We are not, except okay. for these the folks who are um, feeling sick. Yeah. But the numbers of folks being tested are not high. It's still very low, but it's not non-existent. And okay. we went through a period of time where there was literally no testing at all. But now folks are, um, what I am seeing though, is I, I see folks who tell me that they're sick mm -hmm. and it's folks who've had COVID before and they'll say, well, this time is different. So I don't think it's COVID. Uh, and, and then I encourage them to get tested and mm -hmm. it is COVID. So, so yeah, so I think it, even if you've had COVID before, if this feels differently, it does not mean that it is not the virus and that you are not contagious. Mm -hmm. So I will go back to say, if you have, if, it, if you feel different, if you have cold or flu-like symptoms, if you are um, have nausea, those are all potential signs of an infection, you know, and just rule it out. Again, I, I told somebody once, if my elbow hurts, I get tested because body pain was a, a part of the um, infection for me is mm -hmm. it's strange pains in our bodies and people of color, black and brown folks, that is one of the primary complaints of the virus. So that you may not feel anything but an ache in your back, but you might be contagious and carrying COVID-19. So testing is just a preventative measure yeah. that I think we all just need to incorporate as a part of what we do. Uh, regular serial testing. I'm going to go back to that where you're, you have a schedule and every two weeks I'm going to get tested or once a month, that it's just something that you do as part of your own personal wellness and healthcare. And then definitely if you have a new symptom, illness, something that feels strange, then please go get tested. 
So, Dr. Black, do you touch on something early as well? Yeah. That's your phone. Dr. Black is grabbing her phone while she's doing that. Of course, they are sponsor. Yeah. Somebody okay. else's phone. Yeah. All right. Groundwater <laughs> Solutions, groundwater-solutions.org. 704-596-0505, 704-596-0505. Real quick, because um, we, again, this has been just a great conversation and I can tell mm -hmm. you're passionate about this because we're trying to educate our community. But one of the things you mentioned that also isn't getting enough conversation, maybe if people realize that if we get back to that danger zone again, then it starts impacting the hospitals. And mm -hmm. then we are really headed to a very uh different and dangerous spot yet again because then mm -hmm. we've got the the mental health toll that's taken on our, our healthcare workers mm -hmm. uh, our hospitals are full um mm -hmm. the mental health or just, just the impact that has have will have on you because mm -hmm. your loved ones are there and you're not mm -hmm. be able to see mm -hmm. them all of this and i i pray we don't get that far gone mm -hmm. again but um do you think it even people think we could ever go back to that to that level that's correct you know, I think it, I, I believe we can, you know, a virus is um, alive and, you know, it will keep mutating. This mm -hmm. is what we know about the viruses, that they will keep mutating to become more and more. They, they're trying to survive, just like we're yeah. going to do whatever we need to do to survive. That's what viruses do. They mutate so that we cannot kill them and stop their advance. And they get smarter and smarter. They are able to um, be uh, evasive and evade the strategies that we put in place that worked before. So we have to keep getting smarter too. We can't just stop evolving as this virus evolves. You know, so definitely do the things that we've always done. And then we need to keep coming up with, if, if it evades that, we need to figure something else out. So, but don't let's just stop what we've done before that works. Right. Well, um, what you got going on? I know you all had the job fair. Hopefully it mm -hmm. went over very well. And then any updates that you would like to share? Yeah, well, it, the uh, job fair went really well. I think we um, have had folks who started this past Monday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then we have another group that's going to start the following Monday. So we are really, really excited. Uh, we are revamping our, um, we have a a part of our organization called community engagement. Mm -hmm. And so we are revamping um, that piece and we're bringing in staff and our community health workers uh, to help us with that. We're getting our mobile units back out. And just okay. like we use the mobile units for COVID-19, uh, we're using that same model to take health care out to the community, um, uh, primary medical care, mental health, behavioral health, addiction services. We're going to be going out into the streets and into the rural communities with those services as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we've got a lot going on. We are um, um, expanding our medical services into Gastonia, North Carolina. Oh, good. Congratulations. We'll, um, we'll have a practice there. Uh, we are in Albemarle. We're in Henderson, North Carolina, and all of their surrounding communities. So wow. we, are, we are busy and we are excited. Well, we are excited for you and just uh, congratulations as you continue to serve. Uh, you have such a heart for our community and we are very grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Groundwater Solutions, groundwater-solutions.org, 704-596-0505. Uh, Dr. Black, anything else before I let you go? Oh, one thing. So if, if you did miss our uh, employment fair, it is not. So I don't know if it's my internet service or hers. I'm frozen again. Of, uh, spinning. There we go. So apparently she dropped off, but what she was getting ready to say more than likely, they just had the job fair last week, the career fair, an opportunity for you to uh, come out and find out what they're doing and to get involved. You can still reach out to Groundwater Solutions, groundwater-solutions.org, groundwater-solutions.org, 704-596-0505. 
704-596-0505. Well, we're going to take advantage of this last opportunity, especially since we had two hiccups for a few seconds, to just remind you again to keep your eyes open and beware of what's going on with this uh, latest variant, that subvariant that is starting to impact over in Europe. So it certainly is a, a, a going to head this way. So um, when someone says, hey, we're out of the pandemic, said no, you know that strain is starting to spike again. So just beware and be cautious. And another thing, as someone who works with Atrium Health to help to get the word out, go to atriumhealth.org slash about dash us. Uh, it's about uh, coronavirus, COVID safe. Uh, they send me a lot of little tidbits and information. Uh, one is about some of the places where they are out uh, doing the vaccination and the boosters. And so I'll uh, hop on and see if you think you're interested. Of course, Groundwater Solutions provides it as well. But Atrium Health, they've got some locations out in the community coming up also. Again, it's atriumhealth.org slash about hyphen us coronavirus slash COVID hyphen safe. Well, my friends, it's time for me to move out of the way. I certainly appreciate you tuning in each and every Tuesday. As always, life's challenges make you better not bitter. I'm Tanya Rivens. You can join me this Saturday, 10 a.m. on Praise 100.9 FM. Again, Praise 100.9 a.m. Uh, Praise 100.9 FM, that is, getting it at 10 a.m. So Praise 100.9 FM at 10 a.m. is where you can join me for the best in gospel music. I'll be listening for you there as well. Um, please reach out to me if you have any comments, suggestions. We're going to hang in there, folks, regardless of uh, where we are with this uh, pandemic or endemic. And regardless of how we are starting to adjust to the new norm, there's always great information that we can get out to you. And we think that this is just one of many mediums, media outlets that will help to keep you informed and to keep you aware of what's happening. So thanks again for hopping on every Tuesday, 11 a.m., be alert, be well, be safe, and always check on your neighbor. And most importantly, thanks for tuning in to uh, Canceling COVID because together we plan to work at doing just that. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and enjoy Resurrection while we're inside a Holy Week, and then enjoy Resurrection Weekend. Thank you for hopping on.